Welcome to Series 2, Episode 1 of A Bane Legend, with a new look and a funky new sound. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, the walrus of love, Mick Hucknell, for uh, producing that uh, intro for us, which is lovely. I am, and forever will be, uh, Chris Flynn, and I'm uh, a tough guy from the wrong side of the tracks, but with a heart of gold. And uh, with me, as always, is my good-hearted, tough, te- inner-city school teacher who believes in me, Mr... I'm here. That would be Neil Herbert. I won't Hello. attempt any more of the uh, just joysy accent. Uh, so, Neil, how, how's, your, uh, how's your time off been between two series? Have you been... Uh, Traveling the world, learning learning things that you can bring back to the inner city to try and get me out of the awful situation that I'm in with my uh, alcoholic mother and uh, absent father and people trying to get me into the drug gangs. No, honest, Chris, minute I clock off, I forget about all of that shite. <laughs> no, when, I'm not, when I'm not on the clock, yeah, no concern to me. Now, I've been yeah. looking for uh, gateways to hell. I want to get down and have a little, you know, chat oh, really? and see what's going on. Nice one. Yeah. Um, so, have you have you managed to find any? Not been able to locate any yet. The, You've been uh, the... free diving into volcanoes, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know. Anywhere slightly warm and sulfurous. Get into mm. it. All right. Very see, nice. See, see how far down I can get. Um, so, Mister Herbert, do you think that I'm going to be able to complete my GED and uh, perhaps go to college? I think there's, you know, there's no limitations to what you can achieve. You just got to believe in yourself, Chris. That's what it that's is. That's not true, is it? That's simply not. That's not how society's set up. <laughs> that's that's loser talk. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, you you got to you got to take away that negative thinking. I was really impressed. Holding you that, back. I was really impressed that you managed to get Coolio to come in and and help with one of your lessons the other day. I suppose well, he's not doing much at the moment, is he? I thought, you know, like a fellow street tough might resonate more with you. You know, he's turned his life around. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Chris. There was a period in time when he didn't mm. know he'd make it past the age of 24. And really? now look at him, man in his yeah. late 40s doing Pornhub adverts. You could be that guy. You know, two two of those strands of hair sticking it's, out. I think, clinging on to that 90s lifestyle. I think, I, I think 40s is being kind to him, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, was, I was taking a massive punt there. I didn't want to... Yeah. Well, didn't want to insult, insult Coolio in case no, he cut yeah. off your in case he cut off your porn. Exactly. <laughs> or pop the cap in my ass. I don't know. I don't think he'd do that. No, he wouldn't. He's a nice fellow, Coolio. He's living. Um. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've met you met him through Jeff Cannon, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You know. Got him down to the inner city schools. Um. So. Uh, Neil, as you know, I, he's, um, he's a kind of homie, you know, even playing in the streetlights, Chris. I look up to that kind of behavior. Uh, yeah, he, he does prayers in the streetlights, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm doing just you know, anything I can remember from uh, from that Stevie Wonder the cover he did. Yeah, Gangs of Paradise, <laughs> that was it. Thank you. Um, Neil, as you know, uh, I do, I obviously just do this for the money and prestige, yeah, but obviously. my actual, my actual day to day job is television critic for the Daily Express. Oh. Um, You've been reviewing a lot of Diana um, yeah. documentaries recently, actually. Yeah, no, but it's. It is, I'll be honest; it's mainly that, and the um, the editorial rules which we're given is if it doesn't have Diana in, give it a one star. Yeah, or um, Diana or Nigel Farage, presumably. Yeah, or Piers Morgan. Uh, anyone, that, yeah, if it's, but Diana anyone, or anyone objectionable, if it doesn't have yeah. them in. Anyone who says you can't say anything anymore whilst just demonstrating that that's demonstrably <laughs> fucking false. <laughs> yeah. Or proving themselves <laughs> wrong in the same sentence. Um, yeah, so I've, I've started, uh, as you know, I like watching TV shows which were in America, but we didn't get to see in the UK because of, because mm. uh, of I don't know, rights, rights issues, or they weren't considered good enough to spend money on to, to play over here. Well, they might have been but, at three o'clock in the morning on Channel Four. 
you know, that would have been your best chance, to be honest with you. So I started watching the TV show Jericho recently. And what Mm. it's about, right, it's it's the wrestler, Chris Jericho. He stars in it as himself. You'd imagine Uh, and it's also based in the city of Jericho, so it's historical. It's about six, it's like four thousand BC, something like that. Okay, is he going to? Is he like plotting to get the walls knocked down then? Give no, he's he he plays the prince of Jericho, oh. Chris Jericho. So he's interested um, to keep the walls up. He's trying to keep the walls up. Yeah, yeah. he's he's actually Good involved. With in, that. He's involved. He's involved in um quite a bitter dispute with the local council to get the walls extended. So um, a lot of it's set in, you know, sort of uh, civil court and that kind of thing. But um, there's a a lot of, uh, because it's Chris Jericho and they have to show off his wrestling moves and his tits and that, then um, there's... (laughs) He's oiled up mostly, I would have shown. He's completely oiled up, yeah, with a little uh, Aladdin vest on. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So there's a lot of very sort of, in between the court scenes, there's a lot of very kinetic, visceral violence. So it's not for kids. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've got through the first series, 24 episodes, hour each. Um, and he's managed to take, he's managed to take them to the court of arbitration. Um, but they've just gotten wind that the Phoenicians might be attacking soon. So it's ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. So I'm enjoying it. It's good. I think a Phoenician boatman's going through a table at some point next season. (laughs) I would hope so. Maybe off maybe a, maybe off, a flying of the dive rig- off of a rigging or something. Off one of the, he's going to tip one of the. Re- he's going to put him in a suplex hold and then kick off one of those really tall ladders, which is like made of bits of wood and tied together that they're using to build the walls. Yeah. They're really and um, I don't like suplex him into the king of the Phoenicians or something like that. That's what I'm hoping for. But we'll see. I mean, it's you know a lot of it I don't understand because. Um, because it's very kind of it's very wordy. It's uh, it's like Fraser or something. Oh yeah, just whew, over my head. I assume he, you know, um, articulates all of his all of this wordy uh, dialogue accurately. He do, yeah, he does it in the original and Jericho in an unstilted fashion. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's all subtitles. Yeah, wow. really committed to the part. I like it. Yeah, but I don't think he did it all because it looks like he's just flapping his mouth and then someone's badly dubbed. It just looked like one of those Italian movies from the 70s. They just yeah, spoke look, whatever language. Like, um, he's just really screaming early. wrestler things and then just somebody just with no <laughs> yeah. attempt to lip sync at all. It's just, but, yeah. Yeah, or like an early, an early Kung Fu movie or something yeah. like that. Um, cool. Well, so yeah, I, um, you know, I've had to give it a one out of, out of, uh, out of a hundred in the, in the express, but, uh, I'd personally say it's worth a watch. So a little mm. tip for everyone there. Um, so this week, because it's our first episode of new series, we're looking at another fairly big one. It is The Joycey Devil! Yeah. This is, yeah, I mean, again, this is one I've heard of, so that's got to be pretty it's huge. weird, isn't it? I sort of don't trust it because you've heard of it. Yeah, well, we'll see, won't we? I mean, I don't know that much. I just, I... Like kind of like you did with Mary Celeste or Mary Celeste. Yeah, I'll sort of go through what I think I know about the Jersey Devil. Yeah, so you do that. He was he's like some devilish kind of creature. I think he's got like hooves and stuff. Right. Uh, but he looks like a chupacabra kind of. Um, he's got wings and chupacabras uh, don't have wings, don't they? Oh, no, well, it's, well, just... it's a sort of vampire goat thing, isn't it? Oh. I don't, oh, maybe. I don't know. Never caught a How do we know they haven't got wings, Chris? Eh? Anyway, I mean, that might be why they're so hard to spot because they're flying away. So, you know. Yeah, because large climb. flying things are much more difficult to spot than they things can't. in woods. Um, <laughs> yeah, lives in the Pine Barrens um, mm. in New Jersey um, and then harasses people. And they made a, there was like a found, early found footage film. I think it was before Blair Witch Project, even actually. Um, really? The last broadcast that was based around the Jersey Devil, yeah. Yeah, I seem oh. to remember there was a bit of a stink at the time that they reckoned that the um, Blair Witch people had ripped off the idea from the people who did the last broadcast. They did, I think, right. just coincidence. No, um, yeah, well, no, he's, yeah, so he's, well, basically, no, but he's been in a bit of media, hasn't he? So he's, yeah, he's, he's been in, he's been in a that. few. Yeah, he's got books and that. He's been in a few films. I, should, I think he might have been in the X Files. I think they might have done a, a probably the Devil or the Barons or something. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, but this, yeah, no, I mean, he just like attacks people. I think, doesn't he? He just um, well, let's find out what we I'll tell you. What Chris, you're the authority this week. Let's. What I, I am. I am the unquenchable authority. Uh, so I'm going to read off Wikipedia, and we'll see how we get on with that because there's quite a lot on it, and there's lots of different websites kicking about. Some of which you're meant to pay for because it's actual, like the New Jersey Herald and that kind of stuff. Hmm. Either pay for or allow ads and I can't be bothered turning off my three ad blockers to look at it. So unfortunately they lose, they lose this uh, incredible advertising opportunity. Um, But I'm going to go through Wikipedia because hopefully it's amalgamated most of it. Um, But we might. Hopefully someone else has done the work for us. Hopefully someone else has done the work for us. So, uh, Oh, the New Jersey Devils also is an NHL hockey team. So mm. maybe that's why you've heard from it, because I know you're into ice hockey. Oh, yeah. Um, NHL, huge fan. Yeah, massive. They call you uh, Puck, don't they? Um, not only for that, but also because you delight in the character from Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. So Puck Puckington the third. <laughs> Puck Puckington or... Puck, puck, puck. Yeah. A puck sure. <laughs> Puckingham. Puckingham Palace. Yeah. We. So, in the southern New Jersey and Philadelphia folklore. Actually, the puck, United... been a, puck looked a bit like the Jersey Devil, didn't they? He had like yeah. goat's head, didn't he? There you go. Yeah. Oh, was it doggy's head? No, it's no he had a goat's head. Because he was, ba- yeah, that was like the old rooting and tooting with your flute in, having a Saturday. goat's head. Dark prancing about. So I'm going to carry on, Neil, so I don't have to edit out massive amounts of silence while you look up Shakespeare. I'm just going to, I'm just going to yeah, just marry her. I'm just going to look up the uh, plot of Mr. So, Dream. The Jersey Devil, also known as the Leeds Devil, is a legendary creature said to inhabit the Pine Barrens in South Jersey. The creature is often described as fly, a flying biped with hooves, but there are many variations. The common description is of a bipedal, kangaroo-like or wyvern-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery back, like wings. They say like a lot in this. Uh, Horns, small arms with claws, hands, legs with cloven hooves and a forked tail. It has been reported to move quickly and is often described as emitting a high-pitched, blood-curdling scream. Nice. So, Mother Leeds, 13th Child. So, according to popular folklore, the Jersey Devil originated with a Pine Barrens resident named Jane Leeds, known as Mother Leeds. The legend states that Mother Leeds had 12 children, and after finding out she was pregnant for the 13th time... she's called Mother Leeds. Yeah. Cursed the child in frustration, crying that the child would be to the devil! In 1735, Mother Leeds was in labour on a stormy night when her friends gathered round her. Born as a normal child, the 13th child changed into a creature with hooves, a goat's head, bat wings and a forked tail. Growling and screaming, the child beat everyone with its tail <laughs> before flying up the chimney and heading out to the pines. That was an some, Exactly. In some versions of the tale, Mother Leeds was supposedly a witch and her child's father was a devil himself. Some so do you reckon? Of... Do you reckon that she was quite pleased that it fucked off? It's one less mm-hmm. to feed, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Although, how how grown up was the kid? Because she's invested like ten years into that, and then it's no, it was, straight, it, was straight, it was straight. It was directly straight after away birth. turned into a into a yeah. devil, and then thrash put with his yeah, tail and which, fucked off. Yeah, exactly. So um, it was a the, it was a go getter of a child. Wanted straight yeah. out. You know, go yeah. and make something. Make, of make his place in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, what going, to, made. I'm going to Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> Some versions of the legend also state that there was a subsequent attempt by a local clergyman to exercise the creature from the Pine Barrens. Well, Pine Barrens is about a thousand miles square, so that's a big old bit of exorcism, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the I don't know what the fictional rules are for the church magic. What like was it? Area effect of a spell or some shit? Well, they seem to struggle to take the, to do an exorcism on one small girl, don't they? Quite a lot. That like, takes a few of them, and it takes and they're like exhausted. And it takes them a week. So I don't know how they're going to exercise a thousand square miles of forest. 
Well, you say that, but like covering up child abuse cases, they've got really good <laughs> magic for that. Just, that seems to uh, seems to work very very efficiently over a wide area, um, entire country sometimes. But uh, yeah, yeah, the exorcism not so much. But then that, my, most of my knowledge about exorcism is based on either The Exorcist or any of those sort of like movies they do where just someone goes ah! at the camera suddenly. Yeah. And that's supposed <laughs> to be a horror movie. That's terrifying. Yeah, it is that, isn't it, now? It's a lot of, a lot of these jump, movies where it's just starts. boring for about 20 minutes and then just a jump scare. Yeah. Nah! Let's find yeah. It. Yeah, yeah, it makes me jump at the minute. and doesn't, It's not really particularly horrifying. But it's really loud. But there you go. Yeah, someone might as well just pop a balloon. Yeah. Um, Oh, so they'll be doing the next, won't they? Get people in the theatres after COVID, yeah. like five D or something. Well, we're about to um, we're about to get into a new lockdown, aren't we? I would think probably just after Christmas. Entirely possible. We've so got a new. Uh, just so you know, we don't. This new variant works out. Yeah, we 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 haven't. We had some stuff that we recorded last series for this series, and and so this isn't in chronological order. You're hearing this, um, so. Uh, yeah, we've just heard about the. We we work in a, in a in a relative time and space that is no reality. It's not. It's not, yes. it's not yeah. aligned to your your um, chronology. No. We can go backwards and forwards in time. Yeah, we um, we live in a pocket universe of our own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, you can find that confusing sometimes, but it's best just not to worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's like when you're watching a film with time traveling in it and start. Yeah. Picking holes and just don't just enjoy just, just, just enjoy just the ride. Enjoy the story, you know. Just, just calm enjoy. down. Yeah. Come on, just like, a little like, story. Just trying to hey, pussy just trying to entertain you. Just having a little restful story. Pick holes in it while I'm trying to knit it together. Oh yeah. god, you know, like trying to pick holes in this. Come on, guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not even sure what my name is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've got the new variant now, which is named after uh, Marvel's super villain. Uh, was it Omnicron? Devourer of Worlds. Oh, nice. Yeah. Was, it, was, it, was he the Transformer played by um, <laughs> Orson Welles? He was. The, trans- that movie. Yeah. the Transformer played by Orson Welles, Omnicron, yeah. I assume those new Michael Bay movies has got a nice little wink to that somewhere. I'm not oh, saying I'd any... imagine. I'd imagine there's plenty of Easter eggs to the golden age of cinema in a Michael Bay film. <laughs> well, I did, see, I did notice, apparently, it tied it into uh, Merlin, you know, our mate. Did in they? one of those... Yeah, so, so King Arthur Merlin Merlin's got something to do with the Transformers. Oh, has he? I don't know. I don't know, what, I don't know what. I've not. I saw the first one and I instantly regretted it. I've not gone any deeper I've into not the seen any verse, but yeah, not worth it to be honest with you. So Neil, if you're anything like me, what you're asking yourself at this point is, who are these Leeds family people? They sound like some influential people on the New Jersey scene. <laughs> they sound like they sound like the hot well, maybe on the, the Jersey steppers. Shore or something. Are they are they hanging out maybe. with like the situation and whatever <laughs> yeah. those dreadful fucking people were called? I, I can't remember. Oh, I'm talking about the before, Snooky, is it Snookums or something? Snoopy, yeah. Yeah. Snookaloopy. I, um, I never saw it, but they they were very prevalent for a few years. Yes. So the Leeds family, Neil. Let's hear about them. Prior to the early 1900s and before the series of reported sightings of the creature during 1909, the Jersey Devil was referred to as the Leeds Devil or the Devil of Leeds, Mm. either in connection with the local Leeds family or the eponymous southern New Jersey town, Leeds Point. Named after Leeds, of course, Leeds, the city in Yorkshire. It sounds like it's named after the family who lived there. Well, they're probably named after Leeds then. Or perhaps Leeds Castle in Kent. Mother Leeds has been identified by some as Deborah Leeds on the grounds that Deborah Leeds' husband, Jaffet Leeds, named 12 children uh, in the will he wrote during 1736. Seems fair enough then. Which is comparable I mean, you're with... Not, so he didn't leave anything to the Jersey Devil kid then? No, he was doing all right on Broadway. Oh, fair enough. Deborah and Jaffet Leeds also I lived think it was a snub. <laughs> in the Leeds Point section of what is now, uh, now Atlantic County, New Jersey, which is commonly the location of the Jersey Devil story. Brian Regal, that's a good name, a historian. Mm-hmm. Hello, Brian Regal. Historian <laughs> at large. Historian of science at King University. 
theorizes that the story of Mother Leeds, rather than being based on a single historical person, and they always do this, don't they? Oh, folklorists, Jesus. Uh, oh, do you know what it was actually uh, probably? It, 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 it was probably about time. several different people, you know. It's probably an amalgam uh, uh, of many an different An amalgam, you know. Young's collective unconscious. <laughs> despite the fact that there was someone called Deborah Leeds who had 12 children and it's in the record and lived in like Leeds Point. <laughs> no, 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 no. That like, was only uh, one thing. My favourite was that story of the Marie Celestia episode we did. They just made up some shit. They'd gone mad and slaughtered the crowd. <laughs> yeah. And then just like presumably sobered up and went, oh yeah, fuck, I shouldn't have published oh, yeah. that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, apologies. Apologies. Apologies, bro. <laughs> I was I was I was deep in the tonics. So, yeah, actually, it was probably more of a more of a pet tonic in those days. Yeah, yeah some twenty style. Yeah, cocaine yeah. binge. So rather than being so, there was a story of Mother Leeds. Rather than being based on a single American person, originated from the colonial southern New Jersey religio political disputes that became the subject of folklore and gossip amongst the local population. Fuck off. Well, it sounds like this Leeds family, this is a bit Hatfield and McCoy, so it sounds like there's quite a lot of them, and they're not too popular. Well, because you could imagine... Well, we don't know yet. Like, well, I, well, no, we don't know yet, I'm, but I'm, I'm just theorising. So I'm just wondering, you know, like, maybe they weren't that... Just like, slack if they them were quite rich. Well, you know, because you've got, like, a rich family who own a lot of land. You don't know if they're rich. Well, yeah, they named half of the bloody county after them. No, I mean, Leeds Point section of what is now Atlantic County. Leeds Point could have just been a farmstead. We'll get we'll get get on. They seem they seem to be quite um high and mighty to me, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I feel like you've read ahead, Neil. That's what I feel like. Which is rule number one of Bob Club. With the opposite of the scouts. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know you when you try and you try and uh, you know deprogram yourself from that scout training it's hard. Well, yeah. yeah, a lot not of was, not that I was in the lot, scouts, lot of um, lot of missing time during those years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, according to Regal, folk legends concerning these historical disputes evolved through the years and ultimately resulted in the modern popular uh, legend of the Jersey Devil during the early twentieth century. Regal contends that colonial area political intrigue. Involving early New Jersey politician Benjamin Franklin, Franklin's rival almanac publisher Daniel Leeds, uh, 1651 to 1720, resulted in the Leeds family being described as monsters. And it was Daniel Leeds' negative description as the Leeds devil rather than an actual creature that created the later legend of the Jersey devil. So there must have been somebody because um, Benjamin Franklin fucking. Yeah, they were almanac makers, and he's not cussing out another, another, you know. Yeah, he was a very, got very petty man. Very yeah, petty. Nonetheless, he's not, he's petty, not cussing out petty. some farmer, is he? Yeah, he would do. Would he? Is that his yeah, style? he would do. Yeah, he's that kind of guy. Oh, this he's the right little nimby, was Franklin. Much like Mother Leeds of Jersey Devil Myth, Daniel Leeds' third wife had given birth to nine children, a large number of children, even for the time. Leeds' second wife and first daughter had both died during childbirth. As a royal surveyor with strong allegiance to the British crown, Leeds had also surveyed and acquired land in the Egg Harbour area, <laughs> located within the Pine Barrens. The land... <laughs> uh, sorry, Egg Harbour is just making me laugh. Uh, the land was inherited... <laughs> land was inherited by Leeds' sons... <laughs> And family and now and is now known as Leeds Point, one of the areas in the Pine Barrens currently most associated with the Jersey Devil legend and alleged Jersey Devil sightings. Starting in the 17th century, English Quakers established settlements in southern New Jersey, the region which the Pine Barrens located. Daniel Leeds, a Quaker and prominent person of pre-revolutional pre-revolution. Uh, Colonial southern New Jersey became ostracised by his Quaker congregation after his 1687 publication of almanacs containing astrological symbols and writings. These fellow that sounds Quakers, like the devil's work. <laughs> yeah, these, what is what is this strange writing? I'm just I'm just writing down the stuff. I'll that know, you can I'll see if you look devil's folk. These fellow Quakers control the skies. It's magic. <laughs> the Lord forbid it. <laughs> 
Lee he fell a Quaker's deemed the astrology in these almanacs. That has led us on the path to the devil. Out with thee. <laughs> they were too pagan or blasphemous. Yeah, damn right. The almanacs were censored and destroyed by the local Quaker community. Predicts the coming of the sun in the morning. <laughs> it's the devil's work. You're ruining the surprise. I never know if the sun's coming up or not. <laughs> I, sit, I sit there all night shitting myself. God's intent when the sun will rise. I don't, I don't know where this accent's going. <laughs> Doesn't mind to let it go every once. It's a New Jersey pre-colonial accent. Yeah, very accurate, you'll find. <laughs> uh, so... In response to and in spite of this censorship, Leeds continued to publish even more esoteric astrological yeah, you Christian writings. Down. Don't you worry yeah. about it. <laughs> writings that became increasingly fascinated with Christian occultism, Christian mysticism, cosmology, demonology, angelology, and natural magic, which I'll is the honest. name of my second album. Yeah, it's not not a bad not a bad one. And I'll be honest with you, Chris, this is the sort of thing that gets you a Jersey Devil. This kind of behaviour, yeah, you know, the sort of forces you're going to unleash on one of your descendants. You know that and that, and then they then cuss out their own son as they're giving birth to it. Well, no, you'll mix. Well, we'll see. I'm not sure. In the 1690s, after his almanacs and writings were further censored as blasphemous or heretical by the Philadelphia Quaker meeting. Leeds continued to dispute with the Quaker community, converting to Anglicism and publishing anti-Quaker tracts, criticising Quaker theology and accusing Quakers of being anti-monarchists. In the ensuing... <clears throat> and they know that the king is a direct representative of God on earth. Or is that the well, Pope? I always get confused about that. Well, in Anglican. Oh, no, no, not since Henry VIII sorted that one out. Yeah, well, he's not the representative well, the he's, he's appointed, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, in the ensuing disputes between Leeds and the southern New Jersey Quakers over Leeds' accusation, Leeds was endorsed by the much maligned British royal governor to New Jersey, Lloyd Combry. Yeah. No Combry here. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Well, it's a bit yeah. troublesome. <laughs> I heard you fucked off a load of Quakers. <laughs> Wonderful. I imagine, I imagine a 17th century Quaker wouldn't be the most open-minded person, to be honest with you. No. Unless it's, you know, even if it's from the Bible, which is not from the Bible, it's probably satanic. And if it's from the Bible, we'd probably misinterpreted it. So. Yeah. yeah. There's, um, it's got a catch-22 situation trying to have any kind of conversation with them. Um, bit, bit like a lot of the modern day religious adherents where they're seemingly extremely obsessed about the small parts of the Bible we've got to say about, you know, um, people living alternative lifestyles or whatever, or sexuality and, uh, you Ignore know, the entire less, message yeah, of yeah, Jesus. The entire New Testament and Jesus is, you know, yep. philosophy on how we should treat others. There you go. There you go. Right. I've got so, to go and ask there. Lord Cornbury was despised amongst the Quaker communities. It's because he swore a lot. Hello, yeah. Lord Cornbury here. How the fuck are you? <laughs> you should see him eat as well. His table manners are appalling. Ah, yeah. oh, well, is that, is that <laughs> chicken wing? Fucking excellent. <laughs> Sit little down. Get, get that man a bib. Don't mind if I, don't mind if I have a handful of mash, do you? <laughs> so Leeds also worked as a counsellor to Lord Cornbury about this time. Considering Leeds as a traitor for aiding the Crown and rejecting Quaker beliefs, the Quaker Burlington meeting of southern New Jersey subsequently demissed Leeds as evil. We demiss him as evil. Jury. Yeah. Okay. This is the Burlington meeting of the southern New Jersey Quakers. Uh, first point of order. Um, Mr. Leeds is, uh, has, uh, has, ex- has expressed his, his, uh, Disbelief in our traditions and is helping oh, pagan. Lord Comfy, who swears all the time. I I propose that we I propose a motion that we dismiss, dismiss Leeds as evil. Pass. Se- seconded. Passed. That's how it happened. During 1716, Daniel Leeds' son, Titan Leeds. All right. 
inherited his father's almanac business, which continued to use astrological oh. content and eventually competed with Benjamin Franklin's popular Paul Richard's almanac. <laughs> Paul Richard. <laughs> Big corner in the market, that sweet, sweet almanac money. Well, that's why Franklin was against him, not because of... Uh, well, it's because he was a, a almanac rival. The... A competition between the two men intensified when, during 1733, Franklin satirically used astrology in his almanac to predict Titan Leeds' death on October the same year. That's not... I wouldn't really call that satire. A bit prickish, <laughs> you know. I'm only kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, can't you take a joke? <laughs> it's a halfway between a joke and a death threat, which is not really where you want to be. <laughs> Through Franklin's... Yeah. Sorry, Probably banter, not really. Uh, yeah, exactly. He, that's exactly... Or yeah. well, just banter. Yeah. Uh, though Franklin's prediction was intended as a joke at his competitor's expense and a means to boost his almanac sales, Titan Lead was apparently offended at the death prediction, publishing a Fair public admon- uh, admonition of Franklin as a fool and a liar. Fair enough, right? Franklin's coming across as a prick here. Yeah. In a published response, Franklin mocked Titan Leeds' outrage and humorously suggested that, in fact, Leeds Titan had died in accordance with the earliest predictor and was thus writing his almanac as a ghost. God, he's, he sounds like a right fucking He's innocent. beating that joke like a dead horse. I mean, coming from us, I know, but, you know... He's... Yeah, but we don't threaten people. We don't, we don't predict people's deaths. And they go, hey, yeah. all right. Uh, well, what are you upset about it? Uh, well, I reckon you did die. Now you're a ghost. Yeah, if you're going to get so, me into that almanac market, I might think about it. To be yeah, why not? So a ghost resurrected from the grave to haunt and torment Franklin. Franklin continued to jokingly uh, refer to uh-huh. the title. <laughs> what, what character? <laughs> well, yeah, brilliant. What, you have <laughs> ghosts right in the almanac? <laughs> what? <laughs> Never heard the like. <laughs> Franklin what? continued to jokingly refer to Franklin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it. Oh, come on, mate. I was only having a joke. Just having a laugh. I was only these days. What's can the matter you? with you, Joe? What's the matter with you, ghosty boy? <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Are you looking at my birds? Uh, why not? She's gorgeous. Uh, so he continued to jokingly refer to Titan Leeds as ghost even after his actual death during 1738. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the ghosts are double ghosts now. <laughs> Marvelous. That's where the punchline really kicks in. <laughs> Daniel Leeds' blasphemous and occultist <laughs> reputation and his pro-monarchy stance in the largely anti-monarchist colonial South New Jersey, combined with Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin's later contentious description of Titan Leeds as a ghost, may have uh, originated or contributed to the folklore uh, legend of the so-called Leeds devil lurking like the Pine Barrens. It's been written by the winners, Chris, you know. Franklin's not coming across well here. No, he just it sounds a bit prickish. And I, I can see why they're sort of um, anti-monarchist, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But, you know, basically he was just... He was just being a complete... But, you know, he, hey, he's because... got a difference of opinion. So, you know... No, yeah, no, so no need why to not use your platform to, to wish death upon someone? Yeah. No need for that. And then when they th- say, that's a bit out of order, they go, oh, what's the matter? Can't say a joke? Yeah. And then carry on that choke after they're actually dead. God. Show oh. no contrition at all. <laughs> so during 1728, Titan Leeds began to include the Leeds family crest on the masthead of his almanacs. The Leeds family crest depicted a uh, woven, it was like which a dragon, is a isn't it? Bat winged dragon like legendary yeah. creature that sounds up from two clawed feet. Regal notes that the wyvern on the Leeds family crest is reminiscent of the popular description of the Jersey Devil. Mm. The inclusion of his family crest on Leeds Almanac may have further contributed to the Leeds family's poor reputation amongst locals and possibly influenced the popular description of the Leeds Devil or the Jersey Devil. The fearsome appearance of the crest wyvern and the increasingly uh, animosity among local South Jersey residents towards royalty, aristocracy and nobility with whom family crests were associated, may have helped facilitate the legend of the Leeds Devil and the association of the Leeds family with devils and monsters. If I was Ben Franklin, I would have been putting around the rumour that um, this fella had fucked a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, what, that's um, how he got... 
That's how he got his... Um, that's how he got a Jersey ast- Devil running around people. That's how he got astrological Attacking charts. Attacking the week, yeah. Well, cause, but I'm now starting to wonder, do you think with his, you know, his advanced knowledge of almanacking and astrology yeah. um, and science, do you think he was just massively ahead of the eugenics game and he created like a half-man, half women? I reckon it was probably uh, the CIA. <laughs> yeah, really early CIA. Yeah. What were Culper they called ring. before they were called the CIA? I think this, there was the Culpa Ring, which was around, I think that, nah. that was like a revolutionary spy ring. Oh, right. Oh, and that okay. evolved into the sort of Secret Service, which kind of, I don't, yeah, I don't know. They were know. called something different in like in World War Two or something. In World War Two, they... yeah, they came, I can't remember, it was a bit like, yeah, when, where MI6 and then what MI5 and all of that yeah. came from. Um, now there was the, I think it was Culpeper Ring or the Culpeper Ring, I can't remember, where that was around like Lincoln's era. Would you like to be a spy, Neil? Um, probably not, because I think it would be a lot more like John le Carre than it would be James Bond, do you know what I mean? Well, a lot of admin. Like you could never trust, well, yeah, a lot of admin and a lot of, but just like you could never trust anyone and it just feels a bit sleazy. Like, because there's a lot of you like having to use people and use informants, and then they sort of could end yeah, up it's in a lot of situation yeah. get killed. Um, well, I mean, as you know, I as you know, I don't I don't trust anyone anyway. No, um, I've got my head on a swivel at all times for surprise attacks and that kind Absolutely. of thing. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think um, the majority of spycraft is being a confidence trickster. And using mm. people, it's not it's not like sneaking into places and downloading files, although there's probably some of it. It's actually just like blackmailing people and that kind of stuff. No, absolutely. So, I, mean, I think you very much more try and use somebody who's already in there and sort of bribe them or whatever and it, like, assets and all that stuff. Well, I don't, I don't, know, know, I don't know anything people, about it. That's but, fine. Yeah, but it's like when, when you, you then get them in, well, like I say, it just, you know, I, how accurate any of it is, but, it, you know, when you read, like, the John Le Carre novel, and it all seems a bit sad. So, the Leeds Devil. Regal notes that by the late 1700s and early 1800s, uh, at the latest, the Leeds Devil had become u- a ubiquitous legendary monster or ghost story in the southern New Jersey area. Into the mid-19th century, stories continued to circulate in the southern New Jersey of the Leeds Devil, a monster wandering the Pine Barrens, and an oral tradition of Leeds Devil. A monster-slash-ghost story subsequently became established in the Pine Barrens area. Although the Leeds Devil's uh, legend had appeared to uh, had apparently existed since the 18th century, Regal states that the more modern description of the uh, Jersey Devil as well as a now pervasive Jersey Devil name, first became truly standardised in its current form during the early 20th century. Okay, it's probably, so... probably down to when people start actually writing it down in something other than a fucking yeah. almanac, isn't it? Because yeah. um, a lot of it, I assume, was word of mouth. Yeah, And so you've just been like, oh, yeah, no, there's a devil out in the woods. Cause, uh, Don't go think... in the woods, Jersey Devil will get you. Well, because there's quite a lot of poverty in this area as well, isn't there? Like, There's a, there's a lot of disenfranchised people, I think, living in the Pine Barrens or around that know. area. There's something you might come to it later on, Chris, but apparently the, the locals were disparagingly turned pineys. Hey, yeah. pineys! Um, but yeah, it's like a mixture of kind of like, um, you know, poor people and sort of ex slaves and, and um, indigenous oh, okay. Americans, etc. Um, all just hanging out. Appalachians. Trying to, trying to make a living. Yeah, that kind of. Well, yeah, you could imagine it'd be a bit like, you know, people living in Appalachia don't really trust outsiders, probably for good reason, having yeah. their own culture. So there's all sorts so, of rumours and things going on and, and folklore. Yep, I know loads about Appalachian people from watching Justified. Justified, I was just going to say, I've seen <laughs> Justified. That's, that's, I know what a holler is. Mm-hmm. Do you know why it's called a holler? Because no, it's hollow, isn't it? It's, um, no. the, it's valley. It was, but it was called a holler because people used to communicate news from one little township to another by shouting and the echo would bounce off the mountain, so they would literally holler. Okay. Holler as in shout. So they go, yeah. Jim Stairs! Jim Stairs! I thought it was a corruption of Hollow or something, but yeah, no, enough, that makes more sense. So. And Jim's died. That's a shame. Well, it was only about retirement. Well, not really. Guys didn't live very healthily. <laughs> well, he, um, he, lived, he lived a short and disappointing life. Jim um, be Jim. <laughs> Jim be Jim, <laughs> Uh, so, this is what 
uh, regal states. During the pre-revolutionary period, the Leeds family, who called Pine Barrens home, sought its relationship to the Quaker majority. The Quakers saw no hurry to give their former fellow religionists an easy time in circles of gossip. His wives have all died, as have several children. His son, Titan, stood accused by Benjamin Franklin of being a ghost. The family... Fucking Franklin. The family crest had winged a dragon on it, and at a time when thoughts of independence were being born, these issues made the Leeds family politically and religious monsters. From all this, over time, the legend of Leeds' devil was born. References to the Jersey Devil do not appear in newspapers or other printed material until the 20th century. The first major flap came in 1909. It is from these sightings that the popular image of the creature, bat like wings, horse head and claws, general air of a dragon, became standardised. Indeed. So what, what I'm hearing here, Chris, basically, there was just a lot of people... So and your son, were, and your son's a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> fucking weaker. He's over there. <laughs> Could you not do this at the funeral then? <laughs> oh, come on, mate. Come on. He would have liked it. it. He would have liked it. Uh, I like you, Mitch. Well, wank this. He likes yeah. a bit of banter. Uh, what's he going to do? Haunt me? <laughs> <laughs> what's he going to do? Write his fucking little almanac? Yeah, he's going to go write his almanac. Don't think so. I've driven him to death. <laughs> I drove him into an early grave. So basically, there's there's a sort of. Relatively, again, I think they're kind of like a big, well-to-do family. You know, probably own quite a bit of land around. But Benjamin Franklin's just basically slandered them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty much. Yeah, so, what, so what? You know, and then that, that's evolved into uh, into into. So, well, have no. we had any? Have we got any sightings of the? We Jersey have. Devil, I'm then? just going to finish this little bit, and then we're going to go into reported sightings because we're, we're heavy on the 17th and 18th century politics. <laughs> yeah, good. I, People, well, I'm, learning, come for the I'm, learning, I'm learning a lot about the more unpleasant side of Benjamin Franklin. Franklin, yeah. You know. oh, yeah. yeah, not only got his servants to go and electrocute themselves with kites, he also slandered people who were business rivals and had them oh, ostracised right. from the community, despite the fact that they were having to deal with quite a lot of death and were probably grieving. Good guy. Uh Spent too much time in Paris. Um, indeed, many references to the Leeds Devil or the Devil of Leeds appear in early printed material prior to the widespread usage of the Jersey Devil name. During 1859, the Atlantic Monthly published an article detailing the Leeds Devil folklore tales popular among the Pine Barren residents or Pine Rats. <laughs> That's what pine they were called. Rats. Pine there you rats. Go. A newspaper from 1887 described sightings of the wind creature referred to as the Devil of Leeds, allegedly spotted near the Pine Barrens, well known along the local populace of Burlington County, New Jersey. OK, here we go. Whenever he went near it, he would give an unearthly yell that frightened the dogs. It whipped at every dog on the place. That thing, said the colonel, is not a bird nor an animal, but it is the Leeds Devil, according to that description, and was born over in Evesham, Burlington County, a hundred years ago. There was no mistake about it. I never saw the horrible critter myself, but I can remember well uh, when it was roaming around Evesham Woods 50 years ago, and when it was haunted, hunted by men and dogs and shot at by the best marksmen that were in southern Jersey but could not be killed. There isn't a family in Burlington or any of the adjoining counties that does not know the Leeds Devil, and it was the bugaboo to frighten the children when I was a boy. There we go. There you go. So they've been knocking around for 100 years. So here's some He report. seems convinced, despite absolutely no evidence he's never seen it. <laughs> what a school. He's, pretty, he's got a high degree of certainty for something he's never fucking seen, hasn't he? I don't think he's too bright, this lad. He's just a, new, he's yeah. just a newspaper man from the Atlantic Monthly. So well, you know, it's the, you know, yellow yellow press journalism and all of that, isn't it? You know, how much can you trust? Good story in it. Sell papers. Shift uh, copy. That's what you try to do, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you got to do. Is it true? Well, you know, it doesn't matter. It's it tomorrow, print. tomorrow's fish and chip paper. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> tomorrow's <laughs> almanac paper. <laughs> Wipe your ass with it. Tomorrow, tomorrow's coffin lining. Um, so reported sightings. There have been many claims 
of sightings and occurrences involving the Jersey Devil, Neil. You'll be glad to hear. I hope that these are substantive and good. So, according to legend, while visiting the Hanover Mill works to inspect his cannonballs being forged, Commodore Stephen uh, Dicator, I don't know, sighted a, a flying creature and fired a cannonball directly upon it to no effect. Mm. Nice. What can, are cannonballs that accurate that you can hit a flying creature? Um, yeah, I mean, they, you could, I mean, ships could fire at each other at sea, couldn't they? Ships you could take down rigging. Yeah, and but stuff. A, a ship pulled a, a ship that you've pulled alongside. Is... Yeah, you fire at like rigging and things like that, wouldn't you? You could you could potentially hit it. Are you not going to be? It's not going to be a certainty, is it? But yeah. Well, yeah. I just think a flying creature is moving quicker than a ship, isn't it? It's not a well, helicopter. Lead it, don't you? There's any yeah. cannon there, nose, Chris? She's got to lead it properly. Well, I know. Any then... carries? Look, look. If you give, see a flying Jersey Devil and you've got a cannon, I'm you've sure. got one fucking thing you've got to do, and you've got yeah, a but fucking he said... fire. Good, good on him, I say. Yeah, but if, well, I don't. He I took don't, that. He took that I chance. Don't, I don't mind his sentiment, but I'm I'm a bit suspicious about the fact he said, "Oh, I got it directly upon it." So he's like saying, "Oh, I definitely hit it." It's like one of those, yeah, isn't it's it? It's like, like someone goes fishing. He just it? fired like, a cannon oh, and it really... got it got away, and it was yeah. oh, it was five hundred kilos. Hmm. On, on it was over eight tons. Yeah, bigger um, than me. Should have seen the thing. Bigger than my ass, uh, Joseph. Bigger Bonaparte. than the lake he was swimming in. <laughs> it's bigger than the continent of Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> it better all the laws of physics. <laughs> it was well, both. I think he'd be a very good liar in fishing. It's in both this dimension <laughs> and six others. <laughs> Joseph Bonaparte, the elder brother of Napoleon, nice of the same name, is You're also claimed Europe fame. They've also, well, trying. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. That's a little, little roosting saw him a little thing or two. Selena. Um, is also claimed to have seen the Jersey Devil while hunting on his Borden Town estate in 1820. During the 1840, or during 1840, the Jersey Devil was blamed for several livestock killings. Several so attacks. A lot of. Reports was said to have be done. reportedly. <laughs> so, uh, let's get in the name of someone famous. So, yeah. Mm. So, similar attacks reported during 1841, uh, accompanied by Tracks and Screams, who were my favourite um, two step garage act, Tracks and Screams. Oh, they were good. Craig David did a song with them, didn't he? He did a song with them, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was on the out to the Artful Dodger. <laughs> In, in Greenwich during December uh, 1925, a local farmer shot an unidentified animal as it was attempting to steal his chickens and then photographed the corpse. Afterwards, he claimed that none of the hundred people he showed it to could identify it. I oh, wanted it to be found. <laughs> no. On a ship, it's not. Well, I showed it to hundred people. How do you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> Lunatic is what I explained that. Uh, on July 27th, 1937, an unknown animal with red eyes was seen by the residents of Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and it was compared to the Jersey Devil by a reporter for the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Uh, uh, right, well, we've got a who's red, red-eyed thing running around and it can't be killed with conventional means, is what I'm taking from this. How do we know it's oh. not the devil himself? I don't know. Um, oh, in, 18, in 1951, a group of Gibstown, New Jersey, New Jersey boys, they were the nice. New Jersey boys, claimed to yeah, have uh, seen a monster matching the devil's description, and claims of a corpse matching the Jersey devil's description arose in 1957. During the six, during 1960, tracks and noises heard near May's Landing were claimed to be of the Jersey devil. During the same year, the merchants around Camden offered $10,000 reward for the capture of the Jersey Devil, even offering to build a private zoo to house the creature if it was captured. It's nice, isn't it? That'd be a, that'd be a good zoo exhibit, actually. Here we've got some alpacas and here's a Jersey Devil. So, so there was a wave of sightings in 1909, Neil. A wave of them. I mean... During. <clears throat> none of them seem what? to have been particularly substantiated, but yeah. No, well, I mean, if they were... Substantial, it doesn't, it doesn't to, be, to be honest, he doesn't seem to be up to much either, because he's like, 
I was expecting him to be sort of running around killing livestock, you know, no, bothering no. folk. No, he's he just, just out, just out getting on his with his life. business, isn't he? He's, yeah. just, he's just trying to Practice live his best life. Set dancing. Just getting fucking harassed by all of these pecs. Yep. It's these fucking pine rats. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, waves of sightings in 1909. During the week of January 16th, 1909, through January 23rd, 1909, newspapers at the time published hundreds of claimed encounters with the Jersey Devil from all over the state. Among <clears throat> alleged encounters publicised that week were claims the creature attacked a trolley car in Haddon Heights and a social club in Camden. Police in Camden and Bristol, Pennsylvania, supposedly fired on the creature to no effect. Other reports initially concerned... Uh, yeah, initially concerns unidentified footprints in the snow, but soon the sightings of the creature resembling the Jersey Devil were being reported throughout South Jersey and as far away as Delaware. You yeah, see, now, and West that, Maryland. See, that sounds to me like that one you were talking about earlier, where they fired upon it from some was it was it a club or something? Uh, where were what, they? The police in Camden and Bristol yeah. supposedly fired upon it. <clears throat> where were they though? Uh, it doesn't say where the ones in Bristol were, but it did say that he attacked a social club in Camden. Yeah, that was the one that got me, so the social club. So I just wonder if they're having a few bevies. Yeah, like Camden Discharges Lock. their arms, yeah. Yeah, around Camden Lock. <laughs> yeah. Bought, bought, some, bought some bad weed from some geese around Camden Lock. You know, fired off their guns, got a bit of booty, and it's like, what, some are cheap whiz. what are you playing at? It's like, I was Jersey Devil around there. Mm. Like, their guns had no effect, though. I reckon they're just making that up. They were just on. They were just on cheap acid and were yeah. shooting at like um, one of the mannequins with like <laughs> with a coat on outside Cyberdog. <laughs> um, so the I mean, wife... Jersey Devil went down Camden, London. It wouldn't really bat an eyelid. Would it wouldn't you? bat an eyelid. It'd be made mayor. The widespread newspaper coverage created fear throughout the Delaware Valley, prompting a number of schools to close and where to stay home. That's a grift. Vigilante yeah. groups and groups of hunters roamed the pines and countryside in search of the devil. God, people, I mean, there wasn't a lot to do, was there? During, I mean, it's, I think it's good for a community to have a big communal hunt every hundred years or so. A bonding session, yes, go and kick the shit out of something. <laughs> During this period. A creature. During this period, it's rumoured that the Philadelphia Zoo posted a 10 grand reward for the creature. The offer prompted a variety of hoaxes, including a kangaroo equipped with artificial claws and bat wings. <laughs> yeah, I think we should we should continue this tradition today, I think, Chris. Mm. For everyone who lives in the press in the area of Brighton, just go out and try and fuck up Pan or something. <laughs> yeah. I was spotted that flute playing cunt knocking around <laughs> Mr. Park. <laughs> It's going to give him a fucking shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we don't have weapons, though, really, do we? What's the most weapon thing you've got in your house? I mean, I don't need, like, a baseball bat or cricket bats or anything like that. No, I don't I don't have a baseball I've bat. Got, um, um, I've got a, a broken three-quarter-sized uh, DG base that I could probably wield as a kind of yeah, club. Yeah, I was going to say, probably, like, take the neck off of a bass guitar or a guitar, and that'd be, that'd be all right. It's nice. Yeah, the sellotape, chunk of wood. sellotape and knife to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a chef's knife, that'd be. Hmm. Outstanding. That'd, that'd muck up pan, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, throw some bleach in his face. Yeah. Um, so... Those are really apologies the, to any of the uh, the Greek pantheon of gods who are listening. We love yeah. you really. Yeah, I love you really. I only having a joke, Franklin Star. Yeah, it's been been a <laughs> Ghosts. Description. Skeptics <laughs> ugh, believe that the Jersey Devil is nothing more than a creative manifestation upon the imagination of the early English settlers. Plausible. This wasn't that creative, to be honest with you. <laughs> Plausible natural explanations include bogeyman stories created and told by bored pine barren residents, pine rats, as a form of children's entertainment. The byproduct of a historical local disdain for the Leeds family. The misidentification... Is this from straight in the fucking obvious almanac? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. The misidentification of that. known animals and rumours based on common negative perceptions of the local rural population of the Pine Barrens 
also known as pineys. Yeah, there you go. So, pineys or pine rats, nice. Yeah, pine. I don't know. They both sound quite bad, actually. Pine rats are very nice. No. Nah. The frightening reputation of the Pine Barrens may indeed have contributed to the Jersey Devil legend. Historically, the Pine Barrens were considered inhospitable lands, gangs of highwaymen, such as the politically uh, disdained loyalist brig- brigands known as the Pine Robbers, were known to rob and attack uh, travellers passing through the Barrens. During... Reckon they look like Adam and the Ants? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> That's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> I'm an Andy Highwayman. <laughs> um, during yeah, it's just gangs of new romantics, yeah, right, around the pine barrens, right, the pine barrens. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Give you a story to tell, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, we got accosted by some androgynous, <laughs> tiny, yeah. tiny pop stars. Um, I just needed more money for eyeshadow. During the 70s and 80s, residents of the isolated Pine Barrens were deemed the dregs or outcasts of society. Poor farmers, fugitive, brigands, Native Americans, poachers, moonshiners, runaway slaves and deserting soldiers. So-called pineys are sometimes... They're just people foster- trying to live their lives, basically. I, say, I think it sounds all right. They sound yeah. like more interesting people. I, re- I reckon I'd have more fun hanging out with them and the Leeds family than fucking snooty old Franklin and these other wankers. Now, fuck Franklin. Bunch of Quakers going, oh, you join your oats. Yeah, Quakers and Not Masons. Really. Yeah. We got really far into this before oats were mentioned. I was hoping we'd make it through the whole episode. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. So-called pineys had sometimes fostered a certain frightening stories about themselves and the Pine Barrens to discourage outsiders or intruders from entering the Barrens. Nice. You see that, can't you? Self, self-mythologizing. Good work. work. Pineys were further demonised and vilified after two eugenic studies. Ugh, there we go. Were published during the early 20th century, which depicted pineys as congenial idiots and criminals. A scene in research uh, performed on the Kalikak family by Henry H. Goddard, which is now considered biased and inaccurate and most likely falsified. It's weird, isn't it? Because usually eugenicists are normally good, upstanding people. Yeah, it's normally. Well, the, the That's problem history is, taught us. <laughs> the dirty little history is, is that a lot of genetics does come originally from eugenics, but yeah, a lot of those people were quite scummy. But it was incredibly prevalent in the 20s and 30s. Mary Stopes was, was a eugenicist. Who? The thing they never tell you. Yeah, Mary Stopes, um, the lady who sort of like, she was a pioneer of like female contraception and stuff like that. Never. But one that. of the reasons was, is because she was really into eugenics and uh, she uh, never spoke to, I think, I can't remember if it was her brother or sister, but basically married a short sighted person, um, <laughs> you know, thus weakening the gene pool. Really, they should be allowed to die out short-sighted people, Chris, you know. I disagree with that. You know. Don't disagree with that at all. Uh, There you. I'm just saying, Neil. Just saying. A a poor understanding of genetic theory, it's it's about, um, you know, it's about diversity of uh, of genes is what helps helps us survive as a species. Uh, So, Jeff... Uh, Brunner of the Humane Society of New Jersey thinks the Sandhill Crane is the best, is the basis of the, uh, devil, Jersey Devil stories, adding there are no photographs, no bones, no hard evidence whatsoever, and worst of all, none, no explanations of its origin that don't require a belief in the supernatural. Now there's that weird crane. Now I don't think it's the Sandhill one. There's a weird crane which is from Central Africa, which looks mm. like it. Jersey Devil. Yeah, but it's not the sound tool one. They're quite pretty. Mm. Outdoorsman and author. Ooh. I'm an outdoorsman and author. Tom Brown Jr. spent several seasons living in the wilderness of the Pine Barrens. He recounts occasions when terrified hikers mistook him for the Jersey Devil after he covered his whole body with mud to run mosquitoes. <laughs> what? what was he doing in... what? He's an outdoorsman. He's just an outdoorsman. Let's go outdoors. (laughs) Yeah. Medical sociologist Robert E. Bartholomew and author Peter Hassel cite the 1909 series of sightings and the subsequent public panic as classical examples of mass hysteria begun by a region of urban legend. We've seen a few of those in our time. Mm. 
One New Jersey group called the Devil Hunters referred to themselves as the official researchers of the Jersey Devil and devote time to collecting reports, visiting historic sites, or going on nocturnal hunts in the Pine Barrens in order to find proof that the Jersey Devil does in fact exist. See, there's a few of them. It's like the Sasquatch Hunters or Bigfoot Hunters, isn't it? Like, it's just something to do. Like when you first introduced the name, I was picturing them all having identical leather jackets with a patch on the back. <laughs> Was now I'm thinking like a nice, well fitted to bard with uh, fluorescent stripes so that they could be yeah. seen at a distance. GPS. Know. Yeah. Walkie talkies. Possibly both, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, due in part to their isolated and underdeveloped nature, the Pine Barons have themselves fostered various folk legends apart from the Jersey Devils. Other legends are associated with the Pine Barons. Supernatural creatures and ghosts are said to haunt the pine forest, including the ghost of the pirate Captain Kidd, who supposedly buried treasure in the pine barrens, is sometimes allegedly seen in the company of the Jersey Devil. <laughs> Hopefully at some time. <laughs> the ghost of the Black Doctor, the benevolent spirit of an African-American doctor who, after being forbidden from practicing medicine due to his race, entered the pine barrens, practiced medicine in the isolated community of the barrens, and said to still come to the aid of lost and injured travellers. Oh, he's nice. The ghost of the black dog, which, unlike many black dog legends, is usually portrayed as harmless. The ghost of the golden-haired girl, the spirit of the girl who is said to be staring out at sea, dressed in white, mourning the loss of her lover at sea. And the white stag, a ghostly white bear who is said to rescue travellers in the barrens from danger. There's a lot of nice... Yeah, this is just like for me. This is like a really sort of communal, nice area. There's just yeah. all of these snobby pricks that are looking down on the pine. Franklin and his lot. Yeah, fucking wankers. Um, yeah, get on, a, get on a twenty dollar <laughs> note or whatever you're on. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a fifty dollar note. But uh, yeah, no, no, it sounds like, sound like a nice community. Yeah, you know, they're also folk towns. Well, sinning, sinning. Exactly. I reckon, I reckon if Jersey Devil's in with them, he's probably all right. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon they sound all right. These lot. I yeah. might move there. Um, you know, depending on the internet connection, it's still yeah, got yeah. work. Yeah. Um, uh, there are also folk tales concerning the blue hole. Ooh. Okay. An unusually clear blue and round body of water located in Pine Barrens between Monroe's Township and Gloucester County and Winslow Township, Camden County, and often associated with the Jersey Devil. Writings in Jan Harold Brunvand, American Folklore and Encyclopedia, Rutgers professor Angus Cress Gillespie called the Jersey Devil an obscure regional legend for most of its existence and said that after more than 250 years in oral circulation, the legend of the Jersey Devil has many variations. Gillespie cites the devil's images on T-shirts, buttons and postcards and mocktails or cocktails, sorry, don't know why I said mocktails, uh, named after the devil as indication that in recent history, it's in more of the realm of the popular culture than folklore. I wonder what made him jump to uh, celebrity status then. Because it sounds like it was just a kind of like a pretty, um, yeah. you know, New Jersey specific sort of bit of folklore originally. I suppose it's just, you know, people pick up on these things. I mean, I presumably it doesn't sort of state how it became so popular, Chris. No, I, mean, we feel um, like I guess... one of the bigger ones, but... Um, I guess um, the... It being in all the papers and stuff for a week, being a big like, and everyone going mad for it. Probably, mm, yeah, back when the press know, starts becoming really once it, sort of once big, it's in the yeah. press, then I guess that's it, really. It's so, because part of the uh, yeah, part of the story of the, where you live, the local, woven mm. into the local fabric. Yeah. Mm. So, Neil, that's the Jersey Devil for you. What do you think of him? I mean, I was expecting, you know, more. much more. Well, yeah, A, more, and B, I mean, there was a lot there. There was a lot there. There wasn't much, but it's kind of like, um, like I don't know, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead or something. You're just focusing on all of the peripheral players, and the Jersey Devil doesn't make much of an appearance in his own story. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of like um, he doesn't seem to... I mean, I got the impression he's a bit like a pig man of He just doesn't want to, uh, he just wants to be left alone and get on with stuff and hang out with his mates. Sound like quite a nice community. Don't want to be bothered by outsiders and they can blame him. Um, yeah, he doesn't, doesn't really, uh, there's not much substantive about the Jersey Devil itself. Do you know what I mean? There's a, there's a lot of, um, you know, 
kind of well, interesting. It's a lot about like, where it's. I've come learned from a lot more that. about Almanac Wars than I knew. In you know, yeah, the Almanac than, than I knew Wars. Previously, I'll say, I'll say the seventeen hundreds. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's sniffers. let's go through our scoring system, shall we? Yeah. Why not? Okay. So I'll let you go first. Spookiness. I mean, again, it's kind of like he ain't doing much. Um, spooky. I mean, I suppose the something going wrong with childbirth, and you know, especially when we've got so many kids. And I imagine that in those days, childbirth was quite fraught because you probably did, you know, there were a lot of, um, you know, infant mortality rates were quite high and things like that. Huge, so, yeah, yeah well, I that's, think... um, that's the thing. You know, there's the whole thing which people that like say, you know, in the past sort of people's average age was 35 or whatever. Yeah, and I think you yeah. lived until you were 23, you know. But, yeah. the, but the truth is that isn't the case. No, it just like means the, that you had six, six kids and four of them died, yeah. Yeah, there was a hell of a lot of infant mortality. You know, if you live till 50, you're going to live till 70 kind of thing in those days. Like, people didn't die loads and loads younger. No, well, the, the biblical lifespan was set at 70 years, three score and ten. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's a nonsense. Yeah, as you say, it's it's about an average, which is about yeah, infant mortality rather than... Infant yeah. mortality smashed the average like yeah, that, right, yeah. right, right down. It's not everyone suddenly died when they were 40 or whatever. Once you've got, you got to middle age, you're far more likely to get through too early. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so... so um, yeah, I don't think it's that spooky, to be honest with you. I mean, it doesn't seem to do too much. As I say, the, the end... There's bits and pieces around, you know, um, or, or you know, one of your, one of your kids turning out to be a wrong one. But I don't think he really has, does turn out to be a wrong one. I mean, obviously, you don't necessarily want your thirteenth child to turn into a cloven hood monster. But you know, don't judge by appearance. Seems like he got on all right with himself and uh, and hunt, got got a nice group of friends. So um, yeah, but no, nothing too spooky on there. I, I think it doesn't really seem to have done too much. I was expecting it to be far more monstrous. So it's going to be a low spooky score for me of two. Too. So, like so many of the supposed monsters uh, that we see here, they, they're they not actually monsters, they're just different. Um, so, you know, that, that seems to be something which we come across loads and loads. I mean, there are some that are truly kind of monstrous, like I'd say the bloke are pretty monstrous. <laughs> but, like, a lot of them are just different, aren't they? Um, and I think that he fits in with that. Um, I think it's quite spooky how much of a prick Benjamin Franklin was, considering he's so revered, <laughs> almost almost deified. He seems like he was a right wanker. So that's quite spooky. Um, he's only got one aspect of his character here, in fairness. Yeah, but it's quite yeah. a telling aspect. Revealing, yeah. <laughs> it's a very revealing aspect. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess... I mean, if you if you're out in the barrens, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you saw some big flying thing, it'd be spooky. I mean, you'd be even if you knew it was pretty harmless. That's probably just a I don't know, I'm, they're, they're fun. I'm kind of picturing it like um, one of the massive fruit bats you get in Sydney and Australia. That feels to me they're they're like, huge. Yeah, but it's more. And they live up in the trees, and they're they're like the size of children. They're like big, big old things, the fruit bats. You see them when you go into the botanical gardens, all hanging off the trees, but they're huge. It's like, it's like you know, the size of they're the size of kids. Um, mm. So I kind of imagine it looking like that when it flew around. But yeah, I don't know. Um, there's nothing. I mean, there's very little to tie him in with the devil or anything or any witchcraft or anything like that. It just seems to be either his mum cursed him. Or it's just slander. So it's not very spooky. So I'm going to give it a three. Um, believability. Um, well, it's a big, big area. So there could be stuff there that we that we don't know of. Um, would it be? Well, I mean, no one's claiming that it's a devil, though. That's just a nickname. They're just saying no, it's no, some, exactly. some hybrid thing. So I don't know. The fact that no one's claiming it's particularly supernatural probably makes it slightly more believable. And the fact that there are a fair few sightings of it, that's pushing it up for believability. Um, the story itself happened, you know, and a bit frankly or not. It's a, do you know what? It's a really difficult one to get to, to get a grip on this because there is 
the light the where the story likely came from, which is people slandering this family, but then sort of separate to that, almost like completely separate, then there's a load of sightings and that kind of stuff. So do you know what I mean? They're almost two it sounds like one led to the other, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's a difficult one to mark. Um, I think I'm just going to give it a believability of the fact that they're not saying it's supernatural. There could be something there. It's a big area. So I'm going to give it a four. Yeah, so for me, and again, I don't believe that there is a Jersey Devil, but um, you never know. But um, no, it, it's... Um, it, so, but there's certainly there seems to be quite a few people who either do believe it or... or um, you know, reported these things, and it's well, certainly in the past. So you can imagine, you know, probably an area that's quite agricultural um, or you know rural that um, you know these kind of myths and rumours kind of persist, and it's like, well, well you know, you mock it, but you know, and it's always a kind of like, well, you know, friend of a friend saw it. Well, I've never seen it myself, but I know full well. Oh, I geez, really thought it'd been knocking around for hundred years. Um, so it sounds like it was, it's believable enough that what was probably just a piece of slander has started off, um, carried on for another 200 odd years. So I've got to, I can't give it a low score really. Um, because, and I think now it's much more of a kind of like sort of prestige kind of, um, bit of folklore where it's, you know, it's part of the area. It's something you name your sports team after, et cetera, rather than a genuine belief. But the fact that it carried on, you know, for such a long time, um, some, some people must have thought there was some substance there. So I'm going to give it a five. Five, okay. Uh, reach, Neil. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to go. I mean, I don't know whether this is just, again, me confusing the fact that I've heard of something with the fact that they are really famous. But I, I seem to recall this one being a big one. I mean, one thing is, is the um, posterity argument that we always go to. So this has been around for hundreds of years, and it's not likely to to, to stop being a sort of a little rumour anytime soon. So... Um, it's definitely stood the test of time. I think it's something that's known throughout America, um, and I think pretty internationally as well, certainly sort of throughout Europe. So I'm going to give it a... Because I'm not quite sure exactly how widespread it is, I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's 250, 300 years old. Um, it's been in papers and stuff. I think it's known throughout America. It's got a NHL franchise named after it there's lots of books after it it's been in tv and and that kind of stuff not sure how big it is globally um but yeah i'm going to give it a seven as well so narrative slash premise so there are several narratives slash premises really um one being that the mother cursed it there's one that perhaps she was a witch and set the devil or there's the hilarious old Benjamin Franklin just used his position. someone's dead son. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Um, and then, and then nothing really. Some people see it now and then, you know, um, it might have attacked, it, just completely out of character, it might have attacked a trolley car <laughs> just after hundreds of years of inactivity. <laughs> Just, you, know, you get bored and you just you just get bored. bored. He, he might have he might have stumbled across one of the moonshine still. Exactly, yeah. You know, um, well, I took the next morning so and regretted it bitterly. There's not. I mean, there, there's not a massive narrative. I mean, narrative for me really is around this kind of small and sort of out there community where lots of disenfranchised people who were shunned by society were able to go and live, and perhaps they made up some stuff or exaggerated some stuff to meet people, leave them alone. And I think that's, you know, not a bad, not a bad idea. Um, and obviously the Franklin stuff's really interesting. So I'm going to give it a six. Neil. I'm going to go a bit higher here because to be honest Whoa. with you, something like the Jersey Devil, I wouldn't expect much of a backstory. But actually, you've got the whole stuff with the Leeds family and all the rest of it, and the mm. you know the woman cussing out her son, and then you know you know that then instantly. So, so he's got a good, he's got yeah. a strong origin, strong origin story. I'd say there, instantly goes out his way in the world, and then he's got like a, a group of mates as well who live around the same area. Um, so you know you've got this poor community, but you've Captain got a load of, yeah, you know, nice yeah. little fellows like you know your doctor, Doctor Blake, who yeah. still treats people for free. You know the ghost of Universal Healthcare or whatever he's called. 
Um, <laughs> black dog, he's nice just hanging around, helping people out. Yeah. Sad the, lady, the, the, white, late. the white deer who helps travelers, yeah. lost travelers. You know, so I think he, he's, I reckon you could do like a Marvel Universe style franchise series here. I reckon it's quite strong. Um, the, the, yeah. There's the bones here for, for developing a good little good little universe. I the Pineys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pineyverse. Pineyverse. So, yeah, any any film studios interested in the treatment of that, you just give me a buzz. We'll sort something out. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I think there's there's the elements for a good narrative. Yeah, there's not that much on the face of it, but I think there's some strong some strong bits. So uh, I'm only going to give it a, uh, it's, but it's not yeah case in itself. But I think good good elements for it. So I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. <clears throat> so that gives us an overall total of thirty seven mm. out of possible eighty. Not too bad. I think where the, the Jersey Devil's fallen down is the fact that essentially he's he's not a bad fella. There's he's nothing too scary about not him. Not enough Jersey Devil in your Jersey Devil fight, though. That's that's what I'd yeah. say. Okay. So you know, getting um, to make a star if, appearance and then you if you've uh, managed to spot the Jersey Devil or anything like that, or there's anything you'd like us to look at, you can email us. Uh, I'm talking to him rather than shooting at him next time, that's what I'd say. Yeah, don't just fire your cannons. Um, so it's herb.legends.podcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and so that's it. First episode of the new series. Um, to play us out will be uh, Mick Hutnell again. Uh, but from me, I will say goodbye until next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.